When I was invited to, uh, to edit a section of Artist Profile magazine on a theme related to contemporary art, the theme of judgment was an immediate choice for me. Uh, like many artists, I'm mostly involved with thinking about my own practice and um, interests, but it's almost impossible, I think, not to be aware of the broader span of what's happening in contemporary art and ideas which may not necessarily interest one or engage one directly are nevertheless out there prompting one to ask, why do I make the judgments that I make? What are the basic values that I refer to in making judgments? And does the holding of values and the framing of judgments, uh, the, the living out of those convictions, actually uh, imply an exclusive commitment to certain ideas? Does believing one thing perhaps mean not being able to believe in another? I, I guess one of my key um, uh, points that I'd like to suggest is that the concept and practice of judgment um, has, in a sense, never been less um, in favour. It's a, a kind of elephant in the, in the room as far as art's concerned. Um, I would argue that judgment is habitually practised but rarely articulated or analysed, um, at least in much detail. And I guess perhaps that's one of the things that we're hoping to do today. In terms of the kind of thing about making judgments about the progress of one's work, for example, I, I was really drawn to return to some of the writings of Philip Guston. Um, I really enjoy the way he talks about uh, the, necess the necessity to sort of put your work on trial, you know. He talks about the sense in which the canvas becomes a court within which the artist is both the prosecutor, the defendant, the judge, the jury, you know, the potential the executioner criminal. and so forth, yeah. And, um, and that, that, that was a really helpful kind of declaration to me. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he declares, you know, there's no settling out of court, you know, you really have to. And, and so in a sense, to make those kinds of uh, decisions for oneself, you do have to have conviction and conviction comes out of and grows with, you know, a sustained relationship to the creative process. We go back to where we began, we begin with Kant. Kant also talks about the idea of judgment being not, or the judgment of taste in particular, not being simply something that we hold to ourselves, that we say, oh, I believe that and I believe this. We believe that taste is something that we wish others to share. Taste has to be dialogue, taste has to be something that is um, Im not necessarily imposed on others, but we bring others around to our point of view. There has to be a sense that rather than just one person believing something and we're all little atoms, that taste has a much wider, broader dimension. And I think that is art, is what is in play all the time. That we're constantly making judgments, but we're making judgments about works of art that we hope others can and will share. We're hoping that if we say Ken Whiston is a great artist, somebody else will, will agree with us and maybe agree with us for the right reasons. If we say Ken Whiston is a terrible artist, then somebody might you know, argue with us or persuade us in some way. I think the hard thing is to lose the emotional investment in the process of judgment and be able to see things as disinterested propositions, to be able to believe in something and feel strongly about something, but also to be open enough if somebody can make a better argument, if somebody can point something out to you and make you look at it in a different way, can we challenge that? It's to what extent are we hardwired in terms of our taste and judgment and to what extent are we constantly mobile? That, you know, I think, is a, is a key thing with all the appreciation of art. And are we so mobile that we end up not believing in anything? Are we so mobile that all these things become a great soup rather than something where we take a standpoint? I think we're in a crisis in which we are have this problem about value because we have this problem about how we uh, are uh, attached to each other. You know, Margaret Thatcher notoriously said, you know, anybody who says the word society is a liar. I've worked in places where I've seen uh, a little bit of judgment, which goes a long way, uh, change into no judgment at all, which is a complete catastrophe.